Motor people, welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. So today's video, I was going to discuss one the uh, build that I have coming up for my Purple Barracuda engine, and two just some general guidelines, stuff that I recommend. You can take it with a grain of salt if you want to, but it's it's stuff that should help a lot of people out there. So let me get started on those. Uh, number one, if you're, I always try to build the engine practically, so build practical, uh, suited for your application. Right, you don't need a uh, 700 cubic inch mountain motor, you know, in your daily driver, probably. Um, you don't need a, well, I don't know what you need. You, you think about those, uh, you think about that, and then try to build, like, for practical application purposes. Example, mine's going to be a, around a 28 to 3,000 pound drag car, so that will be my application. Uh, number two, uh, the faster your engine is, the more maintenance it will require. I'm not using that as a cop-out to build a um, an engine with less power. I'm using, as an example, a solid rubber camshaft. You're going to need to check the valves more often than you do if you just have a hydraulic flat tappet camshaft, right? The faster it goes, the more money it's going to take, obviously. That's why I don't go very fast. Uh, number three, build to your budget. The more expensive the build, the greater loss that can occur. So example, if you've got a $25,000 Hemi engine, you're putting a bunch of nitrous on it, whatever you blow it up, you're gonna lose more than if you have a uh, $500 junkyard 5.7 Hemi, okay? So just keep that in mind. You can incur a greater loss with a more expensive engine but you have to spend more money to go fast. So I try to live in that threshold, like in that happy medium of, I don't want to be the slowest kid out there, but I obviously will never be the fastest. That's, that's not my goal. My goal is usually to bracket race and have a good time and maybe win some races. Number four, uh, don't take bad advice. Keyboard warriors don't own a car and they've never built an engine. So I see this all the time on Facebook. Um, the A body forum, the any, anywhere you can think of, there's guys just throwing us out. What you should do is this, blah blah blah. Um, in my engine, I did this, 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 blah blah blah. But they don't have any results. You know, the people who know more don't generally go around touting it, saying that they know more. Obviously, myself included, I'm, I'll never claim to know the most, but I'm trying to learn more every day. So that would be another another good idea is to do more research every day. So. When I'm done with this build, my next build should be better because I will gain more knowledge before that build. Let's see. So also the ones who, who have actually built engines, they're kind of hesitant to share anything because they know all yeah. lots of different clowns in a circus and they all decide to come out at the same time and you know they they gotta they gotta hit you with their opinion on what you're doing. I understand it's the internet and a lot of people know more than I do. So anytime I get advice, I like to research it, I like to discuss it, and if I find it to be correct, I'll, I will put it into my practice. I recommend that for everybody. Oh yeah, let's talk about my build. So, so I've got two intakes here. This is just a dual plane Edelbrock uh, Performer RPM. That is a Torker 340. So with my next build, that's going in the Barracuda drag car, I'm actually gonna use this intake. I got that from my buddy Dave Blodgett. We did some horse trading for that, and I appreciate it. I told him, you know, I needed a single plane because I'm building this to be a race car. Race cars should, in my opinion, have a single plane intake. I have an air gap on the truck right now, and for my purposes, running the majority of the time over 4,000 RPM, this will be a better flowing intake for me. After, especially after I do port work, and I may add a two inch spacer to it, you know, it's not a Victor or Victor Junior, which would be a slightly better, but this kind of, it matches my application better than just a dual plane like this. Even though this is a good dual plane, the Performer RPM, if you were building a hot street motor, I would be just fine with this. I, I actually ran this exact intake um, on, on my truck when I was in high school, had great luck out of it, pulled strong in the mid range, all that. I think this is 2,500 to 6,500 RPM. But 
looking at my camshaft, I've got a cam from Iski. Let me put those specs up for you. Which, again, I'll be spending most of my time above 4,000 RPM. So that, in my mind, will be an excellent bracket racing cam. That's what Iski recommended for me. I called them, told them my combination. And all that is going into the 408 motor that is in my black truck right now. So I'm actually going to, that truck is donating that engine for my for the uh, Barracuda build. And I've actually got some um, different pistons to swap in. It's currently, I think, 10 to 1. And I'll be at um, right at 12 to 1 with my heads and with my new pistons in. The reason I chose those um, like this combination of stuff, like I don't, I don't need much, much more lift than that because I looked at my heads online and I believe Hughes engines actually did a flow test on them. So my heads do have the 202 CNC, I'm sorry, they're, they're 202 valves. I'm going to hand port them and actually get a competition valve job done at around 500 lift. They flow around 244 CFM as is. And then at 550, they're kind of maxing out at 251. 600 lift is 255. So I'm not actually gaining a lot by, if I had a much larger lift cam, I wouldn't be gaining a large amount. I'm kind of in the sweet spot of mine with it being a 525 lift. So I'm, I'm doing, like I mentioned earlier, trying to match those components up. But I mean, ultimately, ultimately my goal with this is just to have a great bracket car, uh, be very consistent, low maintenance after several times at the track i can get it optimized i can get everything out of it that it has and i'm not leaving anything out on the table so I actually um have a buddy on youtube that always he always mentions don't settle for good when you could be great um and that's what i'm gonna try for with this engine i'd like to get this car you know into the high sixes and eighth you know so if it's a 600 pound weight difference from my truck which it may be more um, that could be around five or six tenths right there. And the best I could do in the truck was about a 788, I think. You know, six tenths off that, I'm already at 720. I'm going to add compression. I'm adding a bigger cam and better flow and induction inside, in and out. Um, I'm also, also may step up to an 850 CFM carburetor. All those, all those little things add up and can eventually get you, you know, to being a lot faster. Hopefully this is helpful to someone. Um, I appreciate y'all watching, and I'll catch you next time.